Debbie Marcou is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. All right. Well, welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I am Debbie Marku. I'm the host of the show. And today we are talking about closing costs. This workshop is going to be aimed around the uh, conventional buyer. This is on the higher end. This is going to be an $800,000 purchase with a 5% down payment. So this is something that is very standard in Los Angeles County, San Diego County, Orange County, many of the higher loan limit areas. If you're in New York, um, if you're in Chicago and you've got that high high cost area. Um, these are going to be high cost loans. So, um, c- you know, conventional or jumbo, this could be a jumbo loan as well. Um, but there aren't very many jumbo products available where you're only going to put down 5%. So think of this really as a conventional loan and uh, 5% down in a high cost area. So this is where we're talking about extended loan limits that do go up to, um, 822,000. So just keep that in mind. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to work through this one today. This is going to be again closing costs, um, home buyer workshop, conventional loan, 5% down, 800,000. If you have any questions, please feel free to put your questions into the feed. We do monitor our channel and we will go ahead and answer those questions for you. If you feel that this information is really educational for you and you really like it and you want me to keep bringing this content to you, please subscribe to the channel. Click Click that notification bell so you know when we do upload the next one and give me a thumbs up on the video. I'd really, really appreciate it. It would make, definitely make my day. <laughs> that is for sure. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump in again. This is a home buyer education. This is workshop. I believe this is number 10, um, maybe nine. I'm not really sure which one that it is, but this is closing costs, conventional $800,000 purchase. Again, remember high cost areas can go to that number, not all areas can. And if you don't know what the difference is, go back and watch the workshop that I did that was all about the conventional loan. Um, Probably the most common loan that we do today other than FHA and VA. So that is why I'm bringing this estimate to you. Um, But we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Uh, One thing I wanna make sure you guys know is that the best way to contact me is to have my phone app. Text the word mom to 3626. So if you want to ask me your questions, I actually just implemented a brand new button that is not on uh, this spreadsheet that you are looking at on the PowerPoint presentation. There is now a button that says ask mom and you're going to click on that button and you can actually send me an email with your question and I'm going to go ahead and and I'm going to respond to you. It's going to be me that's going to get you that answer. Uh, There's also a contact uh, book us, actually book us, book your consultation. It's all phone consultation. You can click on that um, book phone appointment now button. And then there is the contact us area that you can go into. You can email anybody from my team. You can call us from the, um, from the phone app. So make sure you guys have that phone up. It is really, really beneficial. If you've watched all of the other workshops, talked all about the the great calculator that's included in there. You can watch all of our YouTube videos, the home buyer workshops, you can watch everything. So really a very cool application. Um, And you can also apply for your loan right through this phone app. So I don't know about you, but when I get home from work, I do not want to open up a computer. So it's kind of cool to be able to do everything that you might need to do right from your phone. So anyway, text the word mom to 36. 260 easiest way to get a hold of us and it's the best tool for your tool, tool belt if you are thinking about buying a home. So here we go. A couple other ways to contact us. You guys can um Follow us on Facebook. If Facebook is one of the social media platforms that you guys like to to scroll through and to watch, follow our page. Obviously, if you are watching us right now, we're right here on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel and make sure you guys are uh, watching us when we bring our live at five once a week to you guys every Wednesday. And then um, give us a call. It's 844-935-935. 
1-800-273-3634. If you want to schedule that phone consultation, feel free to call. Matt would be happy to get you uh, booked up. Uh, The call service, if it's after hours, they've got a copy of the calendar as well, and they can schedule that appointment for you. So feel free to call. And then obviously, if we're bringing you guys this information and it's really helpful to you, please, please give us a Google or a Yelp review. We'd really appreciate that. It does go a long way for us. We're bringing you guys this free education and free advice. So why don't you guys do us a favor and bring us a free review. Anyway, all right. So here we go. Closing costs. This is very, very important for you. So maybe you need a seller credit. Okay. This is very, very important. The biggest mistake that you can make is to start looking for a home without understanding exactly how much money that you're going to need to close the transaction. And I cannot even tell you how many people have actually called me on the phone, shopping for a rate, have an offer accepted, and I start to talk to them about closing costs, how much money do you have available, what kind of loan program are you doing? Number one, they have no idea what loan program that they're even shopping their interest rate for. Number two, they don't have any idea that there's closing costs. And so it is very, very important if you are working with a lender and you have already been pre-approved, please make sure that they have provided you with a closing cost estimate. You have gone through that with your loan officer and you understand what you are in for. Obviously, I'm gonna bring that to you next when I switch this PowerPoint slide and you're going to be able to see all of the numbers and I'm gonna walk you through each different line and what each line means. What are you paying for? Why are you paying for it? And you know what does it do for you? So we're going to bring you through that on that slide, Um, but make sure that that lender is doing that for you. And if it's not something that they will do, you've asked a couple of times, they keep ignoring you, kind of blowing you off. You know what you'd probably should you should probably call the Mortgage Mom Radio team because that is not how we work. We need to make sure that you are educated. That is why we are doing these these, uh, workshops and these presentations. We want to make sure you understand what you're getting into, you know what you're paying for, and you know how much money that you need before you get out there, start looking at homes, waste your time, waste a real estate agent's time, fall in love with a home and have your heart broken. So please make sure that you understand closing costs, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and move through it and make sure that you do understand it. Um, Uh, so here we go. So he's going to make that bigger for me so that I can see it. And he's going to make it bigger for you guys so that you can see it. Um, as you can see at the very top, it says itemized fee worksheet. Every single lender is going to have a little bit of a different, uh, way that this comes across. This is not your loan estimate that you get with your closing disclosure or, okay. So it's not your loan estimate that you get with your disclosures. And this is not your closing disclosure that you get at the end of the transaction. We are working our way through this, um, through this home buyer workshop from start to finish. So where did I start you guys? I started you off on buzzwords. What do these words mean? I moved you into the responsibilities and the benefits of home ownership. Why should you own a home and what are the responsibilities? What could go wrong if you're not prepared? Then I moved you guys into the different loan programs and which loan program might fit you best, right? You need to understand that. Then we talked about, okay, I'm ready to go. What do I do? How do I get pre-qualified? And we talked about the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Uh, then we went ahead and now I'm doing some closing costs with you guys. And later after we're all done with this, you've been pre-approved, you understand how much money you need. You've got it all in the bag. The next step after this is that we're going to move into how do you pick the right real estate agent? And I'm going to keep going from there. Once we've picked a real estate agent, you're in escrow. Now what? That's going to be another workshop. So if you guys are really enjoying these and you want me to take you from start to finish again, please subscribe to the channel, click on that notification bell and make sure you know know when I upload new ones, because honestly, this is going to get you there with a lot less stress and you might actually really enjoy shopping for that home and getting closed on that loan. So here we go. This is your itemized fee worksheet. This is the way that mine look when I hand them out. And again, some lenders might look a little bit different. We're going to start on the, um, I guess this would be your left-hand side. And I want you to see it says 800 items payable in connection with the loan. So the first thing that you want to see is there's a loan number on there. There's an interest rate, the type of loan loan is conventional. I mentioned that base loan amount, 760,000 loan program, 30 year conventional, um, term 360. This is a 30 year loan sales price, 800,000. So that's what I mentioned before. And total loan amount again, 760,000. The reason there's a difference between the base and the total is that if you're having an FHA loan you're going to finance that mortgage insurance up front. If you have a VA loan, you're going to have that funding fee that you are go- you may finance up front. If you're a disabled veteran, um, you're not going to finance it. If you pay it in cash, you're not going to finance it. Same with FHA. You can choose to pay 
that mortgage insurance out of pocket up front. Most people don't. If you're trying to do a lower down payment kind of loan, you typically want to finance that to keep your out of pocket to a minimum. So this is just kind of showing you what I put together for you. And now we're going to go through fees. So on the left-hand side of the screen, your numbers in the 800 column, the processing fee, underwriting fee, and the funding fee. These three items are what you are paying to your mortgage company, to your bank, to get your loan. This is what we are charging you to do this this uh, purchase transaction, okay? So all of that together is totaling up to fifteen ninety. That is what we charge. Some companies will charge sixteen ninety. Some will charge eighteen ninety five. Some might charge twelve fifty. Some might charge nine ninety five. Everybody's going to be a little bit different in what they charge, but then other fees might you know differ a little bit as well, or maybe the interest rates are a little bit different. But this is what um, we charge uh, working for JMJ Financial. Um, this is one of their estimates, and this is what they charge for their processing, underwriting, and um, funding fee. So that is what you're going to pay to do your loan. So now we're going to scroll down a little bit um, further and we're going to see 802. I have nothing there. In 802, it says credit or charge for interest rates. So this is where you would see your points listed. If somebody talks to you about paying points for the loan to buy the interest rate down. This is where you would see that charge for that happening. In this particular estimate, I am not paying anything or buying anything down, not charging anything. You could have a credit for the interest rate. So for example, and this is just an example that I threw together. Please understand that 3.625 is not an interest rate that I am quoting to you. It is not an interest rate that I'm guaranteeing you. This is just a number that I threw together for purposes of this presentation. Um, but let's just say, for example, 3.625 is the par rate. That is the rate at zero points today. And I have a client that is willing to take a rate of 4%. Well, maybe that, that difference in interest rate might give them a credit uh, towards to apply towards the closing costs. So maybe you're a little bit short to close on the loan. Maybe that's something that we can look into doing to try to help you to make up the difference of what you need to pay for all of the costs, all of the closing costs. So uh, we're going to get down into 803. So everything 803 and below, these are charges that are for um, the, to close, obviously to close on the house, to close the loan. But these are not being charged by the bank. These are all third-party invoiced fees. So we're going to charge you exactly what we are charged. We are not going to charge you more, but unfortunately we do have to charge you the fees in order to close the transaction. So in this one, you will see in um, 803, there is an appraisal fee. Okay. Well, number one, it says 803 adjusted origination charges, 1595. This is just subtotaling the top part, which was the processing, underwriting, and funding fee. So I do want to bring you back to that. So now we're at 804. Everything below 803 is invoiced. So 804 is $500 for appraisal fee. That is about on average what we see the appraisers charging. Now, if your home is larger, uh, much bigger square footage, maybe you've got acreage to the property, then that price could go up. If you're looking at an investment property, the appraiser has to do additional work to bring us in some rent schedules, tell us what the property might um, rent out for, cash flow the property, give us utilities and maintenance, it's going to be a more expensive report. So just keep in mind, this is on average what we see, but it can definitely go up depending on what you're looking at buying. Um, so at JMJ Financial, they do not charge a credit report fee. They do not charge a tax service fee, and they do not charge a flood certification fee. Many banks do, and those charges might be $75 that charge for the um, for the credit report. It could be as much as $200 for the credit report. The tax service fee could be $65, and the flood certification fee is usually around $7. So what are all of those things? Well, obviously, we all know what a credit report is. The credit agencies do charge the lender to pull a credit report. They also charge the lender if there's any updates that need to happen because maybe something was wrong when we pulled it that wasn't correct information that we do have to verify. So your credit company will charge. It just so happens that JMJ Financial is not charging you for that fee. Most lenders do. Most lenders also charge you for the tax service fee, and that's usually about $65 on average. What is that doing? That is making sure that when your property tax bill is due, uh, twice a year here in California and other states, it might be different, but here in California, it's due twice a year. They're going to make sure that the county is sending a copy of the bill to the lender 
as well as you, the owner, the, the homeowner. So um, that is a one-time charge to make sure that those duplicate bills are being sent. Uh, 807, the flood certification. What is that? Well, every single property that we lend on, we need to pull a report and we need to make sure that you are not in a flood zone. So if you are in a flood zone, then we're going to require flood insurance to make sure that your house is protected, just like we require that you have fire insurance or homeowner's insurance for your home as well. So that is what those fees are. are. Again, typically on average, they're going to run about $75 for the credit report, uh, $65 for the tax service and $7 for the flood certification. But if you're doing a loan with Mortgage Mom Radio and we're putting your loan through JMJ Financial, you're not gonna actually pay those fees. So now we're gonna scroll down a little bit further and I believe on page two, we're gonna get into 900. There we go. And we're gonna have to scroll back up when we're done, Matt, to get to the other side. And um, we're gonna stop where it says transaction summary. So this uh, 900 box is where we're gonna stop before we then go back up to, um, well, we're gonna move over to, a thousand, and then we're going to go back up to the other side of the top of the page. It's kind of strange. Um, but anyway, so 900 items required by the lender to be paid in advance. So this is for your property taxes and for your homeowner's insurance, as well as your interest. So I put 28 days on here because I wanted to show you a big number and how this can actually change from loan to loan. And wh when does it change and why? Well, it's based on when you get an offer accepted and when you uh, negotiate with the seller to close on the property. So if you negotiate that you're going to close on the second day on June 2nd, you're going to have 28 days of interest that you're going to have to pay because we close June 2nd and you're going to own the home through the end of June. So we're going to collect 28 days. If you negotiate to close on June the 30th, we're going to collect zero days. So it depends on the day that you close, which can substantially change how much money that you need in order to close on your house. If you're looking at this estimate right here, that interest I'm assuming is going to be about $2,142 for 28 days. So keep that in mind. The day that you close on the loan will change how much your closing costs will be. But in this situation where I'm showing you 28 days to give you a worst case scenario. So we've got 2142 showing in 903, you've got your homeowner's insurance policy. You get to select who you're doing your homeowner's fi slash fire insurance. So it's one in the same interchangeable, uh, but you get to choose which mortgage or which insurance company that you want to go through. And that's why it says next to it, T TBD. I don't know if you're going to use farmers or Allstate or Stillwater. You know, there's so many different RLI. There's so many different options in insurance these days, lemonade, <laughs> um, that I'm just putting TBD on there for a home that is uh, $800,000 in sales price. I, on average, I'm going to see the insurance be about $1,500 or so uh, for the year. So that's why I put that there. Now, mind you, every state is a little bit different. You Texans, you guys got some expensive homeowner's insurance. So you want to make sure that you are estimating for the area, for the cost of the area where you are looking to purchase. That is something that we are going to take you through if we do the pre-approval with you. So just make sure that you're very specific about where you're looking so that we can determine your taxes and your insurance for your area, for your state. And remember that we are licensed in Tennessee. We are licensed in Texas. We are licensed in Oregon, Washington. Washington, California, Arizona, Nevada. Um, we, we've got quite a few others, uh, Georgia, Illinois. I mean, we got a ton of them, right? So if we have the, the state, Idaho, uh, I think Colorado, I mean, we got a ton of them, right? So just call us. And if you're looking in a particular area, we'll make sure that we put an estimate together that is uh, specific to you. So now we're going to move over to the thousand because I think we all understand that we've got to have our insurance in place at the time of closing. And we're going to pay interest through the end of the, the month that we close our loan in. So now we're on the right-hand side of this and we're in the 1000 area. And this says reserves deposited with the lender. Why are we getting reserves from you? Well, this is for your taxes and your insurance. So every time that those bills are due, the tax bills and the insurance bills, once a year for insurance and twice a year for taxes, if you're here in California, we need to make sure we have enough money that we've collected from you to be able to pay those bills every time they are due. So depending on where you are closing and when the next tax bill is due, the dates are different by state when they collect 
Again, sometimes it's once a year, sometimes it's twice a year. Texas used to be once a year. I think you still have the option of once a year, but they've really moved more towards two. So um, again, you know, it's just going to depend on where you're looking. But here in California, this gives you a really good idea. We're collecting five months for property taxes, just again, based on the way I did this estimate. It is dependent on when the next tax bill is due from the time that you closed your loan. So I have seen this before be as high as nine months. That is the absolute highest that we would ever collect. And that means that the month that you are closing is the month that the bill is due. Plus, we need to collect three months to get your um, padding in your account for your impound, for your taxes. So that could be as high as nine months and realize that I'm showing you five months. So take another four months of $833. Um, that's another 32, 3,300 bucks, 3,400 bucks. I don't have a calculator right now, but you guys get what I'm saying, 833 times four. And that would be added to the total amount of closing costs on this estimate. And it's going to be based on the month that you close the loan. So nothing that is going, it's going to be the same no matter what lender that you go to and nothing that the particular loan officer that you're working for can control. It is truly based on when is that tax bill due next and what day are you closing on that loan? So, um, but this gives you a great idea. This is a very middle of the road estimate that I made to make sure that you are prepared for what you would need for a purchase price of 800,000 with your 5% down on a conventional loan. So uh, Matt, we're going to scroll back up and now we're here and we're at the 1100 and now we're in your title charges. Uh, you've all learned what title insurance is. We've done an episode on title insurance. If you don't know what it is, go back and watch that episode. It is in our home buyer uh, playlist, home buyer workshop 2021 playlist. Go in and learn what title insurance is, but you have got title charges. Again, these are all third party invoice fees. They are not going to change from working with me to working with somebody else. The only difference is that I'm going to overestimate what I think it's going to cost you and somebody else to try to get to slam you into that property may underestimate to make it look a little prettier than what it is. For me, I'd rather you be very happy at the end of the transaction. It costs you a little bit less than what you're anticipating. You know, it's maybe a thousand dollars less than what we had shown you at the beginning, which is a little easier to close rather than all of a sudden you owe $2,000 more than what I actually showed you. So uh, make sure that you are seeing every single item that could be charged to you. 1100 in this 1100 box title, it charges uh, many, many times you're going to see the title endorsement fee. Many people ask me, what is that? Title endorsement is basically the lender being added to your title insurance policy, just like your lender for your car loan is being added to your car policy um, or your car policy is being added to your loan. I believe it goes that way. So Basically, your lender for your for your car loan is getting added to your car insurance, if that makes sense. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring you in circles, but um, this is getting your lender added on to your title insurance policy. A lot of times title insurance companies will charge us to do that and they call it an endorsement fee. So then you have a messenger courier fee that could happen. Somebody might have to run some paperwork back and forth throughout your transaction that you might be charged for. There's a sub escrow fee. So if you are working with First American as your title company, Tycor Title as your title, title company, but there is an outside third-party escrow company, not a First American escrow or not a Tycor title escrow. So you are not working with the same escrow and same title company for both transactions. Then they will charge you an additional fee to be able to pull the two together, independent escrow with independent title. So that is what that fee is. And again, might not exist if you're working with First American escrow and title or Tycor escrow and title. But many, many times you as the buyer do not get to choose who those, who those companies are. Many times your real estate agent will say, you know what, we're going to go ahead and give the seller the choice of who they want to select for those because for 125 bucks, do we really care? We want to get your offer accepted. And the majority of the time, they're not one in the same. It's not the same company doing both pieces. So um, that's why I throw that in here. Again, I'm trying to give you the worst case scenario so that you are prepared. All right, your recording fees. You're going to have to get um, your, your uh, deed recorded and, um, you know, 
We owe, you owe us money at the end of the day. So that's what that's going to be. All right. So we get into your escrow company. Um, escrows are typically about uh, $2 per thousand and a $300 padding. Sometimes a $200 padding just depends. So it's, you know, if it's an $800,000 purchase, $2 per thousand is $1,600. And then uh, $200 on top of that as a base fee. And that gets you to the, um, you know, about 1800 In this case, I'm showing you 2150 So I went high wanting to make sure, again, that I'm not underestimating. I am overestimating to make sure that you are prepared for all of the money that you might need in this price range, in this bracket. Um, notary fee, you're going to typically see about $250 to get your documents notarized. All of your actual loan documents, your note and deed of trust and everything else that goes along with it. Your package of 100 pieces of paper that you receive at the end before we close and fund the loan. Um, and I typically see that to be about $250 for that notary fee. So that's why I put that in there. Again, the escrow company may have to do some messengering back and forth. Uh, so I added an additional $50 for their cost. So uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit. and We've got our 1103 where it says owner's title insurance and there's nothing there. Please keep in mind that this is something that you could pay for as a buyer. It is very standard in the state of California that the seller pay that fee. But with as hot as the market has been and as many people that are trying to write offers on properties when they come available, there are some agents right now that are talking to their buyers about paying that cost for the owner instead of the owner having to pay it as an additional perk to get your offer accepted. The owner's title insurance is uh, typically a little bit more expensive than the lender's title insurance. So just keep that in mind. Your, your, um, your real estate agent could give you an idea of what that owner's title might run you. But in this situation for an $800,000 property, it's probably about $2,000. So just keep that in mind. If you decide that that's going to be something that you're going to offer to a seller to get your offer accepted, that owner's title is a good chunk. So make sure that you're asking what you should expect. The lender's title insurance, the buyer always pays for, uh, unless you're getting a, a credit from the seller to cover closing costs. But in this case, we're not showing you a credit. So in this case, you are paying for your own lender's title insurance. And this is making sure that the uh, title is free and clear of any liens that might um, still be there from the previous owner. And it is making sure it is um, providing uh, that the lender is always going to be in first position and the first person that gets paid off should you default on your home. So that is what lender's insurance is. And that is about the right number. Maybe it might be a little bit less expensive than that, maybe 1400 or so um, for that for that loan amount of 760000 So uh, next on our list is recording fees. And so again, you have your recording of the deed. That was the $15, $14 and odd change that was up above. But now you've also got um, your recording costs to take the, you know, the seller's no longer the owner now you are the owner and the county is going to charge to get that done. So uh, I put $368 in there because that is on about average what I typically see um, from all of the different counties, uh, you know, what they charge to do that, that piece of the puzzle. Now, HOA certification fee, I have that in here. Trust me, there are many, many properties that are $800,000 and a condo. So, you know, there are some pretty expensive condominiums out there. And I wanted to throw that in here because anybody that might be looking at this and they are um, maybe buying a condominium, maybe at a lower sales price, I want you guys to understand that is a fee. It is about $500. Sometimes they're $360, sometimes $390, sometimes $400. Um, typically, they'll charge about $75. So when we have somebody that is buying a home in an HOA, and if you don't know what that is, go back to our buzzwords. It's workshop number one. Um, but if you are buying a home that is in an HOA, we've got to actually order all of the HOA documents. We have to get their budget. We have to get their financials. We have to see how many defaults have been in the complex, uh, how many of the units are owner-occupied versus investor uh, rental properties. So there is some work that we have to do when it is a condominium. And in order to get that package, many times it runs just under $500. And so that is why I'm showing you this number there in that 1305 section. It is what the HOA charges us to get those items, get the insurance policy, the HOA certification, and all of the documentation from the HOA. Um, but you know, some of them are cheaper. So I go with what I kind of see as a high on average. So you can see I've got down there under the 1320 line, Matt, you got to move it up a little bit because of where I'm at. You can see that the total closing costs for this loan are 7532 
This does not include those prepaid items. So the prepaid items, again, were your interest, your insurance, your impounds for taxes and insurance, and that is going to be added to the 7532. So right now we're at 7532. We're going to scroll down to that second page now. And uh, there you go. Stay right there. And on here, you can see that your, um, if we go down to where it says under the transaction summary, and actually let's first go to that box, that 1000 box that I talked to you guys about before the nope, go up just, a, just a tiny bit. Um, cause I actually, um, Matt go up just more, please more. Up, up, like, no, no, second page. <laughs> there you go. Okay, stop right there. So you guys can see in that 1,000 box, or you see 1,011, you can see the 6942, total estimated reserve prepaids. That 6942 is being added to that 7,000 from above. So if we look at the transaction summary, left-hand side, closing cost summary, you can see borrower paid closing costs, 14,693, Okay. Almost every time somebody asks me, what does it cost? How much should I expect for closing fees? And we haven't worked, we haven't put an estimate together. I will typically tell them on average, it's going to run about 2% of your sales price. So if it is an $800,000 home, your sa- it, the closing cost at 2% would be about 16000 You can see that I'm coming in at 14693 So if you're out there and you don't have it, you know somebody that can build you this estimate, hurry up and build it for us and show us what this is. Um, then just again, if, if you factor in about 2% of your sales price, then you're, you're doing a good job. That that's a, that's a good number to budget to be prepared for, and you won't come out short. Um, so there you go. You've got $14,475 on the right hand side of the box there. It says total estimated funds needed to close. So you've got your purchase price of price of 800,000. You have your closing costs, 7,532. You have your um, reserves, prepaids, and um, those are typically called recurring closing costs of sixty nine forty two, and that is giving you a total of eight fourteen four seventy five. We're going to subtract your seven sixty from that. A couple of small fees that I said the seller was going to pay for about two hundred and eighteen dollars worth, and you are now seeing that you need fifty four thousand. $693 to close this loan. So 50, let's call it $55,000 to close on this 800,000 sales price with 5% down. So I really do hope that this was helpful. I'm sure that you have questions. I'm sure that there is something that I said that you're like, wait a minute, I don't get it. So the reason that I actually record this is so that you can go back and hear me say it again, scroll back and hear me do it again, especially if maybe there's something that you don't understand. And if you have that phone app downloaded on your phone and you've got the ask questions, ask mom, push that button and send me an email and ask me your question about this video. I would be more than happy to take you through it and explain it in further detail until you get it. Remember that I do this every single day. I'm doing this for a living and I've been doing it for close to 30 years. So I understand this like the back of my hand. You don't, you've never heard it before. And if you have to watch it seven, 10, 15 times, that does not mean that you are slow, that you don't understand. It doesn't mean anything other than the fact that this is brand new to you. You've never done it before. Nobody's ever explained it to you. You've never seen it before and it's totally foreign. So please do not feel bad if it doesn't make sense. Get that phone app, text the word mom to 36260, schedule your consultation, talk to me on the phone, Send me an email, ask me your questions, whatever you need to do to feel good to get the answers that you need. I am here to help. So, again, how do you get a hold of us? It's 844 935 3634. I sure hope that this was helpful for you guys. Again, this is closing costs. It's a workshop. I'm going to guess 10 uh, and I might be wrong. Matt will, Matt will fix it. He'll, he'll name it in the actual video, but I believe that this one is number 10. And uh, again, it's closing costs, conventional, 800,000, 5% down. We hope you guys have a great one and make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell if you want to see all the rest of the episodes as we bring them into the playlist. We'll talk to you all real soon. Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things 
done When you're in need and don't know where to go Pick up the phone and call mom 